Yeah. 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 Okay, it is 10 or 6 p.m. A.M. A.M. It's 10 or 6 p.m. somewhere. <laughs> it, it's 10 or 6. And the business meeting of the 65th World Science Fiction Convention will be in order. Woo! <laughs> By the hammer of Wispus. <laughs> I think what I'm about to say is completely pointless, but I may be able to of learning it and writing it down so you're going to hear it anyway. Minasan or Haya Vadaimas, and Hajima Mashke. Kono Kaiji wa Wuspusu Business Meeting Des. Anamita wa Sandy Kevin Des. Kevin Stan wa Chairman Des. Anamita wa Jisleku Donaruku Des. Don San wa Deputy Presiding Officer Des. Watashi wa Nakamura Pataru from this. Watashi wa Secretary of this. Those are your options on the guys you ask. He did. Now, let me say that despite that introduction, the official language of the business meeting is English. We haven't been provided with a translator. Um, I will repeat that if it appears necessary at another business meeting, as it looks like there isn't. There are people in the room who might need an introduction in Japanese. Um, Famous to stunt. If you have one of these, which is the G phones, if you press this button until it explodes, <laughs> if you press this button down here, you'll see a thing will come up saying "Manner Mold Set." It should. Like yes, it's that. press and hold. Manner Mold Set. It's press and hold and Manner Mold Set. And you'll be on sign for this, okay? And then you can undo it the same way. Um, and the sign-up sheet is being turned and that's it. Okay, uh, I am Kevin Stanley. I am chairman of the business meeting. <laughs> to my left is the secretary of the business meeting, Pat McMurray. To my right is my deputy, Don Eastlake. Don is also going to, I think, be serving as timekeeper unless he lumbers somebody else with the task. Okay. <laughs> this is the preliminary business meeting, and I am familiar, I can see by the audience here that I, I, I would, in fact, is there anybody here who has never attended a WISPAS business meeting? Okay, thank you. Um, I will try not to leave you behind in the dust. I've tried to uh, warn some of you in advance what's going on, but this is a fairly familiar crowd, and you are, I hope, pretty familiar with our procedures by now. Um, despite the small size of the room, however, I am still going to ask that people speaking on a question rise to, uh, um, to get my attention and to, and to speak. And then, so let's, uh, I guess I should start with basic procedures. Um, as we go through the agenda, when you wish to speak to a question or get the chair's attention to make a motion, you need to stand and wait for me to call on you. Then uh, when you have finished, and to relinquish the floor, sit down. Judy, you don't have to do that. I'll, I'll raise you, my hand. Raise my hand. And you are at the edge of my peripheral vision, so you may have to do something louder to get my hand. I'm not <laughs> deliberately ignoring you. Okay. Yeah. Noted. That's right. And for the benefit of the secretary, even though you are mostly regulars, please state your name. Besides the fact that you are being recorded, and it's just conceivable we might actually upload this video to Google Video is the most likely place for it. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube, does, YouTube has a time limit. Okay, these videos are longer and I need to go through a different mechanism. Uh, this being the preliminary business meeting, our job is to receive reports, take care of some nominations, deal with some resolutions, set time limits for business to be discussed later at one of our subsequent meetings, and deal with the initial introduction of new constitutional amendments and other business. What are the other things I should be doing? That's a good point, yes. The secretary reminds me, uh, hold on to your agendas, leave, bring them back with you. Uh, there is no intention to print additional agendas or have more pieces of paper available at subsequent meetings. It is, the mechanics of getting new stuff printed are rather difficult here. 
And expensive, yes. Um, if, you, if you come tomorrow and you didn't bring your papers, you may be just out of luck. And uh, we somehow run out. Anything else you, that folks can think of? All right, in that case, let's uh, move, let's get going. First item is the report of the Mark Protection Committee. The report of the Mark Protection Committee, including the uh, committee, the subcommittee established by order of the business meeting last year to start promoting the Hugo Awards more appropriately and to, uh, raise its profile, is attached. I'm not going to read it. Uh, other than to say the official, the, the committee involved, the subcommittee, which was called the HASH Committee, uh, rolled out a new, new official website for the Hugo Awards uh, called thehugoawards.org. That was opened about 10 days ago. We've been very pleased with the initial results. And uh, we hope to make that a place that not just we in fandom already know about these things, but also basically the mundane press, the, uh, the, the, uh, the New York Times of the world, can go for information about our awards and we hope to raise the profile of considerably. The Market Protection Committee, when it met yesterday afternoon, uh, continued that committee, it renamed it the Hugo Awards Marketing Committee, which more accurately reflects what it's actually doing, and uh, told it to keep going along the way you've been doing and keep reporting in. Are there any questions from the meeting to the Market Protection Committee? Okay, hearing none, the uh, next issue we have is the nomination of members to the Market Protection Committee. Uh, as noted in the agenda, uh, the members whose terms of office expire at this World Con are Ben Yellow, Kevin Stanley, and Tim Illingworth. Uh, there's also a listing here of who can be elected from what zones. Without objection, the incumbents are renominated. Are there any other no nominations? Any, anyone else wishing to make nominations to this committee? Hearing none, the nominations are closed. The election will be held tomorrow. I do believe that we can. We suspend the rule. I forget we worked on that. We can suspend the rules and reelect the slate. Uh, I think we can do is suspend the rules on that because it's standing rules. Yeah. 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 Bright ends are allowed. We will. I'm going to check on that. Okay, but I think because the elections are uh, are there. I believe it's because it's handled in the standing rules that it's possible to suspend the rules and reelect. But I will, will, if necessary, we will have a paper ballot at tomorrow's business meeting. Excuse me. Next item is the nitpicking and fly specking committee report. How about somebody other than me reporting on this? You have Don your uh, okay. the, uh, uh, there's one the nitpicking and fly specking committee uh, works primarily by email and uh, it's reported back uh, one motion. Um, short title the question in question. <coughs> And that's in your agenda. It's uh, very short page, page four. So it's <laughs> like this. And it's listed as page. Uh, and it's listed in the. Uh, it's also on page four. Yeah. The question in question is on yeah. page four or five of the main agenda. Four point two point one. Yeah, item four point two point one. Okay, it's also there. Uh, well, it also appears in the separate page. So it does. <laughs> Sorry, I could be. Okay. Okay. Also, the Department of Redundancy Department. Obviously. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, this move to amend uh, standing rule 5.5 to clarify that the prohibition of the motion to the previous question only applies when there is a non-zero amount of debate time remaining. <coughs> so that when the debate time has been exhausted, you can in fact move the previous question or move to vote now. Members should rise if they want to get the chance. Mr. Glazer. Yes. Um, in the concurrence of the phrase previous question, there's no space. Is that just simply a typo with the presentation here? Or is it actually in the minute in the... There's a missing, oh, there's space. A missing space. That's a typo. I think I think it's when we when I I think it's probably happened when we cut and pasted it from one document to another. But yeah, it's in line two of the text of the motion after yeah. the first yeah. word. We'll make sure when we when we keep on. I think in the first word there should be a, a space before the mysterious interior capital Q. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yellow. Um, question: Does this mean, therefore, that? Previous question will be in order if there is zero time. This is correct. Available. Yes. And the purpose of this, I believe, is um, to codify an existing chair's ruling on this subject. 
Yes, I, I know good. you wanted Thank to Thank you for saying me. that. <laughs> I was going to, Dan. Yeah, you're giving it a chance. I was actually going to give you a chance to, but you raised it. Okay. So wait a minute. Go Um, okay. you, you want to continue the explanation? Uh, sure. Uh, the rules provide that, uh, uh, the, the intent of the rules is so that there's a very small amount of debate time left, such that it's really faster and easier just to let the debate time be used up by speech and debate. There's no particular point in, in cutting off this brief period of time. So, uh, it was a question, however, um, so the rule says you can't have a uh, motion to, for the previous question or to vote now when there was um, less than a minute left. And the question was, did that prohibit that motion when there was actually no debate time at all left? Uh, under our rules, when there's no debate time left, uh, you can still make motions to refer to committee, to amend, and so forth, it's just all undebatable at that point. Is actually way with our rules, but the DBA from the standard Robert's rules. So it, the purpose of the motion for the previous question or to vote now is not just to cut off debate, but also explicitly to cut off these possible secondary motions, which would be undebatable if men made when there was zero debate time left. And uh, that's a useful function. <laughs> and therefore, uh, the chair interpreted, uh, I believe last year's yes. meeting, chair interpreted the rule as not applying when there was zero debate time left. And uh, I'm not sure remember if that was appealed or not, but there was no either there was no objection or if it was appealed, the chair was sustained. And this just writes it into the rules to make it clearer uh, in the standing rules. Okay. Um, I think the way we want to do this is go ahead. Do we want to do we want to vote on these as they come out of committee, or go ahead and take committee reports and then take up the? Okay, you think you don't know about I, I think it'd be better to just, even though they're listed down in here, to just go ahead and vote on these as they come up. Is there any objection to adopting item uh, 4.2.1 of standing rule amendment? Hearing none, the motion is uh, the amendment is adopted by unanimous consent. That's a standing rule amendment that does not have to be ratified. <coughs> Before I continue to the next item here, I've remembered a couple of things. First of all, for those of you who are collecting sirus, seals, in your sticker books, here is a list, here is a, 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 a beginning of a sheet of WISPA stickers, which I will send around if anyone wants to collect them. And in addition, there are still a limited supply of business meeting fandom ribbons. Please, I will go ahead, I will, I will trust you. I will send this bag around. Please take not more than one. Because that, I believe, is the last bag of them. I don't want to have to buy any more for a while. Do these stick better than the others? I cannot answer no, that. They are, however, they are, they are, they are, they are the they're totally different. They are different. So they probably stick in a different fashion. Yes. <laughs> I, I, the chair does recommend uh, getting more. Yes. Mr. Glazer. Um, just a little bit here. When you think of past the room, where did the signing sheet go? I think it ended up by the... Uh, yeah, right on the, the door. Oh, it's at the door there. I don't know, but I haven't signed it. Most of the front row will be here. This will have a sign. It will start up fast. It came this right. way. Right. 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 I thought it started up fast. All right. We're going to keep it moving. All right. Yes, we can check these off. No, I signed it. It went It went through this row. It's going to start up. Next is the uh, World Con Runner's Guide Editorial Committee. I'm told there will be a verbal report for this committee. Is there anyone here to give this report for the World Con Runner's Guide Editorial Committee? Uh, hearing none, we'll move it. Uh, we will. Uh, let me see. Do I? We'll check it tomorrow. Okay. Um, the chair has got some ideas on this, but uh, if we don't get a report from this committee tomorrow, the chair will simply go ahead and move forward with appointing its membership the way this is a standing committee and does not have to be continued, but the, I do have to appoint new people to it each year. Uh, the nitpicking fly specking can I let me just a moment, Ms. Matthews. Uh, by the way, the nitpicking and fly specking committee members are reappointed. I should just realize I forgot to do that. All oh, the existing members are reappointed. Okay, yes. For okay. those of us who came in late, could you tell us where we are on the agenda, please? We are at item one. We are just passing item 1.3 on page one of the agenda. Thank you. And that is the most amount of backtracking I'm going to allow. It is just where, where we are now. Item 1.4, the Hugo Eligibility Rest of the World Committee. Mr. Daugherty, would you like to report? 
in the uh, body of the packet draft, you'll find a one-page uh, report of the Hugo eligibility uh, rest of the World Committee. It doesn't have a page number, unfortunately, so I can't direct you to it, you just have to find it. Um, there were 12 active members of the, uh, the Hero Committee. Uh, we met on an, using an email discussion forum. There was some discussion and debate. I can't say it was a very active or controversial discussion. The result of that was a unanimous uh, uh, proposal to, for the committee to be extended for another year. And an almost unanimous, so 10 for one against one of the to move the adoption of the extension of Hugo eligibility for another year, and those two proposals have been included in the uh, in the report. All right, there and, is. And one final thing, as requested last year, the list of active members' names are actually included in the report, so you know who was The secretary and the chair greatly appreciate this, Mr. Arkin. Is there any objection to adopting the, res the resolution, we need another hero, which continues the Hugo eligibility rest of the world committee as previously charged with the new chair and members appointed by the chair of the business meeting? And with the chair of the Hero Committee authorized to add additional members to the committee. Is there any objection to this? Hearing none, this motion is adopted. The chair appoints Mr. Darby as, as chair and all the existing members as, as noted here. The, the committee has moved the adoption of the, res, of the motion this year's model. The, is there anyone who wishes me to read this motion back? Yeah. Yes, it's also on page three of your <coughs> agenda. This uh, would renew the motion on uh, page three. Page three. Um, this would renew the eligibility extension rule that has been passed most of the past few years since we established this mechanism. And uh, I will, okay, since the, I'll ask one more time, is there anyone who wishes me to read this, read this motion? All right. The motion is on, or the, uh, yeah, the motion is on this uh, el extending eligibility. Is there any debate on this question? Mr. Donovan, you've stated the case for it. Do you wish to make a further statement on behalf of the committee and its support? But broadly speaking, the committee had uh, a strong belief that there was merit in continuing this for the time being. There is an instructional imbalance between the, uh, um, the, pub the publication systems in, uh, between the U.S. and the rest of the world, and therefore it remains to extend eligibility. Um, I don't want to go into the, the details of the debate at this stage, although we can go if you wish to. No, not necessarily. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this resolution? Is there any objection to adopting it? That, what? Mr. Matthews, please yeah. stand. Well, members are pleased, unless you are physically constrained from doing so. I know it's a small room, but I really, I may not notice you just doing this, honest. Okay. Okay. Mr. Uh, is there a reason to keep doing this year after year after year instead of just putting it in and being done with it? Uh, this, that's, believe it or not, I, uh, the chair believes that is debate on the motion. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, I just, but, 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 recommends, but recommends that if the member does feel that, they're, that, uh, strong, that it should be made a permanent ruling that they apply to the Hero Committee and suggest that they propose it as a constitutional amendment. Yeah. Thank you. Or suggested himself, yeah. but uh, probably on, but the chair is un, un, unlikely to let it on the agenda at this point. Uh, is Mr. Yellow. Um, I believe that, in fact, it would be within the member's right to amend the motion, and therefore he could do it. Oh, that way. Yeah, that's the backdoor method. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought of that yet, but you're right. <laughs> Go talk to Vince after the meeting. Okay. Right. Okay. Yes. Is there any objection to adopting motion 4.1.2, extending eligibility to people awards for non-U.S. publication? Hearing none, this is adopted by unanimous consent. Okay. Thank you. 
Next is the formulation of the long list entries committee report. And that's attached and has some motions in it. The Folly Committee has been continuing its attempt to uh, standardize the uh, list of past world cons with uh, sometimes greater or lesser success and has submitted two motions. The first one is routine and it is item, it's on page four of your agendas. It is moved to continue the long list committee as currently constituted, and I just, and fortunately, oh no, it is, our name, our members are listed on page one, yes. Uh, to continue the committee as currently constituted with the committee authorized to supplement its membership at the committee's discretion. That motion, me having been submitted by the committee, is before us at this time. Is there any objection to continuing the Pauli committee as currently constituted? Hearing none, that's adopted by unanimous consent. Mr. Dardy. I forgot, sorry, from the previous one. If any member wishes to approach me to be a member of the Bureau Committee for the next year, please do so. Ah, yes, absolutely. If you're interested in this subject on, on the Hero Committee, yeah, talk to Vince. Similarly, yeah, I'll guess Mr. Mazel. Uh, point of order, Mr. Chairman. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the proceedings here, could you please explain the term of used, which started with the character F, and what its relationship is to anything that's printed on this page, because I can't see it here. Which page? You mean for all? Oh, yes. It, 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 Explain the, the acronym. acronym. It does not appear anywhere on this page. That's a good point. Page four. Okay, that's fine. It appears on the committee's report. The long list committee's for, the name the formal name of the for, long list committee is the formulation of long list formalization of long list entries, and, there, and that, that's what the Folly Committee, that's, what, that's its short name is Folly. Can I just pick something in here? Yes. So I followed what I think is standard practice of, if I use an abbreviation, the first time I use it, I make it clear what it's an abbreviation for. Correct. So for example, at 1.5 it says formalization of long list entries is Folly, ah. and, and from that point on I then use the abbreviation. I apologize for any confusion. I However, the, the term does not appear in the report. So is no, there is no connection between the agenda item and the report using that term. Uh, yeah, cool. Cool. Correct. That's correct because the, 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 the member's observation is correct, yes. Yeah, well, it's because we, we, we do it. One way in the agenda is one way in a different way in the suggestions. Okay. 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 Uh, the chair apologizes for any confusion. And Again, you're right, Mr. Rosales, you did exactly the right thing in stopping us there. I am going to keep moving, all right, and, you, if, and I'm not going to wait forever for unanimous consent either. But all you have to do is just say object or something like that if you want us to, in fact, if someone says object when I do that, then I'll just put it to an ordinary vote by show of hands, okay? Um, the uh, long list committee has also in introduced a, a motion that is slightly more substantive and gives instructions to the um, oh, I, yes, I will say, okay, right, so the committee is, a, right, the Folly Committee is continued, and I don't have to appoint anybody to it because it's just exactly what it was before. Okay. The Folly Committee, formulation of long list entries, has introduced a motion that instructs the minute picking and fly specking committee to do things. The motion is moved, or it's called the Dis 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 Discouraging Wheel Reinvention Act of 2007. Move to instruct the nitpicking and fly specking committee to remind all seated Worldcon committees at regular intervals of the existence of the long list committee and of a standard list of past Worldcons and Hugo Awards, and that Worldcon committees are encouraged to obtain these lists from the long list committee for use in their publications. <coughs> uh, there are no. Uh, are there any members of the long list committee, the Folly committee, who wish to speak on this motion? Okay, and that, uh, yes, Mr. Doherty. Is, I thought you a moment. Are there other people who wish to see the sign-up sheet who have not done so yet? If not, could you send the sign-up sheet over to the little platform by the door? I think that would be good. <coughs> really late comers coming in. Thank you. Okay. Simply put, the, uh, each Worldcon is run by a different committee who... Uh, have a different degrees of uh, knowledge of the history of the Worldcon. Uh, 
frequently we find that the, for instance, in the souvenir book, which is the most notable uh, example, the list of previous World Funds and the previous Hugo winners is often uh, different from the latest information we have in the long list committee. It would therefore be useful to have the reminder to the, uh, the committees that, that such a list does exist, and that therefore prevents confusion if anybody has, uh, you know, is looking through the list and sees a different uh, uh, you know, name for a convention or a different Hugo winner or a different number of people attending it. The chair observes that at this time, the Mark, I'm sorry, the Nifty and Flyspeck Committee has several things that have been assigned to it as regular nags to committees. Um, Mr. Illingworth has programmed his committee to twice a year send an email to the committee itself <laughs> saying it's time to go ping the Worldcon committees again. And I believe ever since we started this practice, one member of the committee, I'll get here, <laughs> has been writing a more or less the exact same word <coughs> the variable fields changed sent to all standing Worldcon committees. Mr. Bloom has been the recipient of this. And I do apologize for those of you who are Worldcon chairs here who have received this. I know it may sound it seems a little bit personal. And some of you already know it already, but we figure this is probably the easiest way is just keep using the same thing over and over again. And in fact, sometimes you may learn something. I don't know. <laughs> Is there any other debate on the motion on the Discouraging Wheel and Wheel Reinvention Act of 2007? Mr. Matthews. What is meant by regular? Should that not be defined or something? The word, this is the same terminology, the chair notes that this is the same terminology that has been used in previous charges to the committee. Um, that has left it up to the committee to decide. The committee has decided that this is six monthly intervals. Chair observes that this, at least you more or less know what I'm drinking here. Yes, this, this, this particular item, when passed, will end up as one of the meeting uh, ruling, not rulings, motions of continuing effect. So the next time, so it's updated, so it'll show up there as well for anybody who reads that. Okay. Uh, is there any objection to adopting item 4.1.4? of the agenda, item 1.6, the Taming the Digital Wilderness Committee. Uh, Mr. Glazer is the chair of this committee. Does the committee have a report? Um, due to the chairman having um, real life issues this year uh, and becoming aware of Mr. McMillan's work, we basically did not meet and see. Uh, I personally support what he's doing, but the committee as a, as a whole did not meet this year. Okay. Uh, is there any action that the committee wishes to propose? Um, I think that, um, are you already on the committee? Oh, okay. So that answers the question. Let us right. talk afterward. Um, we would like, we would like the committee to be restated for a year. Uh, I've been pointed out, does the, did the committee actually, as a committee, decide to do something? Or no. are, are there any motions regarding this? Mr. Uh, Mr. Glazer has the floor even though he didn't stand up. I really wish he would. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we would simply move to, be re to continue for a year. Mr. Glazer has moved personally to extend the Digital Wilderness Committee. Is there a second to this motion? Oh, you didn't have a You can call out second. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, because you're regulars, I am okay. Second. That doesn't you don't need to report seconds. The motion has been seconded. The question is for what purpose does the member I want, to, I want to know what the committee is for. The tending of the digital wilderness is clueless to me. This is a committee established some years ago to discuss I guess I should give one. Um, this is a committee that was established some years ago to to discuss, debate, do something about, I don't know, uh, electronic how do you want to define it? It was about webs, the web and Hugo's, basically. Yeah, it's, it's probably, it's an old minutes, but it's to see, you know, the effect of the web on, on, on the Hugo Awards and our, our award system and perhaps suggest things to do. There is a motion on the floor to extend the Taming the Digital Wilderness Committee as currently proposed. I uh, suppose you go ahead and if you consider what you said to be the opening statement on it, and we'll share something else you want to say about it in favor of it. Uh, just to say that, uh, 
be uh, best website you go is a part of what the committee is, is, under, is has under prominence, but it's not the complete issue. Uh, other issues can be, for example, uh, in the art world, where, where, where there are questions of originality, right, when, when things are produced digitally and, and other such issues. Anyone wants to speak uh, in, uh, in opposition to extending this committee? Is there an objection? Like yes. Objection. Okay. Um, this is Mr. McMurray. This is going to sound harsh, but I believe that a committee uh, constituted to discuss electronic matters that doesn't need to manage an electronic meeting during the course of a year probably doesn't really have a purpose. Uh, now, wait, wait. I, I have to allow anyone else who wants to speak in favor of the motion to, to continue the committee first. Anyone else wish to speak in favor of the committee's extension? Okay. Mr. Glazer. Uh, no, simply as stated, uh, the reasons for our not meeting were strictly extrinsic to the committee's purpose. They had to do with uh, personal issues of, of the chairman. Okay, thank you. I'll minute that then. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this motion at all? Uh, having, having heard at least one speech opposed, I will take a vote by show of hands. Those in favor of continuing the Digital Wilderness Committee as currently constituted, raise your hands. <coughs> hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The affirmative has it, and the committee okay. is... So that's adopted on the vote by show of hands. Right, let me just catch up. Yeah. The secretary needs to catch up. Seven actually needs no action from the uh, business meeting. The Higher and Stronger Duo Committee is not a committee of the business meeting. It is a subcommittee of the Market Protection Committee. The MPC has continued this committee and renamed it the Hugo Awards Marketing Committee. Yeah, it, it didn't actually belong in the agenda, but no action required here. Heading to our Worldcon and uh, NASFIC, okay, actually, yes, Worldcon, I, item 2.1, rather, is what picks up here, because items, item 2.2 doesn't come until the uh, uh, site selection meeting. Uh, item 2.1 are the financial reports from, oh, I see where I'm getting wrong. I get what happened. Never mind. We, this is financial reports, Barry. Your financial reports are either in your package or were uh, submitted as loose sheets. I believe there is, I see, we actually have three final reports. Anyone here from TORCON 3 wish to give a report? Well, TORCON 3 indicates from their numbers that that was their final hmm? I, that's a good, I guess that's a point. I, I don't know if there's anyone wishes to discuss any of these reports. They just didn't. I will go down them if anyone, I would rather quickly, if anyone wants to state more than There's nobody here from Canadian that I'm aware of. Is there, are there any, anyone wish to discuss this report? Mr. Mizells. Uh, just an observation that, uh, firstly, there is a reference to note one, and there's nothing that says note one. Secondly, the exchange rate looks a little odd. There, are, there appear to me to be three notes at the bottom, label one, two, and three. Uh, yes. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Canadian. Is this the Canadian? Canadian. Oh. Canadian. Only one note. It is not enumerated. Yeah, there is. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's. <laughs> there and, and the note does not appear to refer to the exchange rate. I'm sorry. <coughs> um, <laughs> well, yeah, yes. Uh, this looks to me to be. Yeah, I think I know where that came from too, because I seem to remember seeing a, a draft of this report. Um, there was another note in there that, that, that uh, I suggested did not belong. It was not really necessary to tell us where, where your bank account was held and things like that. And there's, uh, but I, so I don't really know what the reference is for. However, the exchange rate doesn't look particularly odd to me. It's, if anything, it's getting closer and closer to par. Um, it may have been, well, I, I don't know what they, I don't know where they looked it up, okay? I have yeah. no other, uh, further information. It looks a little high even for that day. Actually, it's a little low for today. Low? No, that's what I was, it was actually low. I mean, it's closer and closer to par. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see it go the other way pretty soon. It's 0.96. Yeah, 
After discussion, this is maybe accepted that exchange rate was approximately correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not really relevant, honestly. We don't have anyone to answer a question on it is the problem. So if you have, but I will say this, if you do have questions, there are a couple of people that I think who might be able to answer something about it down at uh, uh, Montreal's vintage. Yeah. Sure Item 212, the Millennium Philcons financial report. Are there any? It's a separate attachment. They can, at this point show a remaining reportable balance of $35,734 U.S., of course. I don't believe there's anybody <coughs> here who wants to, I don't think there's any questions on it this time. That's true. We should probably mention that where the default dollar, the default currency used is U.S. dollar. Correct. So if it doesn't say that, Correct. That's right. Everything is U.S. dollars unless stated otherwise. Speaking of which, item 213 is Torcon 3, who um, have presented a what they tell us is a final report, which appears to distribute the remainder of their money, and therefore discharge their reporting requirements to us. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody from Torcon 3 who wants to state anything? Okay. So Torcon 3 final report is separate from any of the discharge they're reporting the bond Yes. Millfill is not discharged, by the way. They're still they're still at it. Yeah. Norisecon 4, item 2.1.4. Anybody there? Ah, yes, Tim. Uh, I've been asked, uh, Tim Central. I've been asked by the executive board to uh, uh, make our final report. Having uh, dispersed uh, the remaining assets of the convention, this is our final report. I, I can't necessarily answer any questions, but if anybody does have any questions, I can uh, call the treasurer and find out if there are questions. Okay. How do you spend it, sir? It's in the roster, right? Uh, okay. S. <laughs> Z C Z E S U I L. You look it up in the roster, yeah. There was the winner for the most fun kind of kind of award, by the way. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, uh, Thank you for sending uh, the, the chair. At, uh, thanks, uh, Maurice Con for sending a representative and congratulates them on discharging their financial reporting obligations. Good yes, job. We're pretty happy about it too. <laughs> uh, been there, done that. Submitted the financial report. Yeah. Uh, interaction. Speaking of financial reports, Mr. Godfrey. Interaction reports of uh, last year. Uh, our intended uh, dispersing of uh, surplus. This report this year is basically showing what we've done, which is that almost all of it has been dispersed in various uh, pass-along funds and other uh, grants. There's a tiny amount of money left, which is also allocated, so and we, it will also be dispersed in line with previous uh, reports. So there's, there's no significant new material here, it's just showing that we have spent what we said we have spent. Yes. Um, the chair thanks interaction for sending a representative and congratulates them on completing their reporting obligations. Good job. I know you're relieved with all we all are. Okay. Cascadia Con, the, NAS, the 2005 NASVIC, has submitted a financial statement. And it, uh, I don't know what's wrong there. We have one question. Has the Market Protection Committee received our check yet? Yes, the Market Protection Committee has received our pay the payment. Um, Something I didn't mention in the main in the report from our committee, uh, we have established that the committee's fiscal year runs from July 1st to June 30th to give us an opportunity <coughs> to cut to prepare our financial reports and so on. So everything we receive after July 1st will show up in next year's report. And we thank Cascadia Con for their donation. Yeah. Then, with the exception of that, I, I note this as a final report. Said surplus <coughs> funds shown there have been passed to the sale in 2011 15 can you, can you, can you, Sorry, half order. 
So I'm sorry. Could yeah. you say that again now? You you decided that of the four that there was an amount you gave to the market committee who would do that I can't remember how much it is because I don't yes. have it in front of me. That, that, that amount is noted as other down at the bottom of the, the, the second page of our report. The remaining four thousand thirty one dollars and fifty one cents has been passed over in part to the Seattle in the two thousand eleven bid committee for okay. purposes of the Okay, that Cascadia Cotton has donated the, its, the, its remaining surplus to uh, the Seattle 2011 bid. Uh, is there anyone wishes to make a statement on this? Um, Mr. Mr. Point Yellow. Of, point of information, actually. Um, under the Constitution, does that make the, uh, the Seattle bid a designated successor organization and therefore obligated under the reporting requirements? Uh, in our in our rules, yeah, you've, you've raised a thorny issue just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> May I make it the thorny issue easier by saying that Seattle in 2008 would be happy to report on this use of the surplus mm -hmm. Does that so, does that answer your question? Uh, I think we want it on the. I think we want it into the record. Would, okay, well, that, that's what right. the rules say, rather than a vol rather than it's a voluntary action. Because if president, president. Two point nine point four. Yeah. It says in the event of a surplus, the World Connor National Committee or any alternative organization entity established to oversee and disperse that surplus shall file annual financial reports. I'm not convinced that a the existing bid committee is an organization uh, founded for the purpose of overseeing and dispersing the surplus. Uh, yeah, the chair is persuaded on that question that 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 would not be that they would not be required to do so. Although the Seattle in 2011 bid may choose to do so, and I believe they just all volunteered to do so. That's good. So, so I'm going to that as a pre-existing bid committee is not required to do so. Yes. Uh, Drawing a, a distinction between a pre-existing and a not pre-existing bid committee. Yes? A, a pre-existing bid okay, committee. The chair therefore rules that a per 2.9.4, that a pre-existing bid committee is not an alternative organizational entity established to oversee and disperse surplus per 2.9.4. Okay, Mr. Yellow. Um, a question. Okay, the other members who need to sit down at this point, wait for their turn. A question of <coughs> fact which uh, Mr. Porter may be able to answer. Uh, and also how that affects the ruling is whether the Seattle in 2011 committee existed, is in fact a pre, since the word pre-existing is material to that ruling, whether the Seattle in 2011 committee existed before CascadiaCon. Uh, since if, if it did, let, let then it finish. If it did, it is clear then it could be a pre-existing. If it did not exist, then the question is, how does the word pre-existing... Oh, hold, hold, hold on, hold on here. Okay, you're, 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 you still have the floor, Ben, as you are yielding some of your time for Mr. Porter to answer your question. Mr. Porter, do you wish to answer that question? The bid committee did not exist prior to Cascadia Con. But, it, but that it, did it exist prior to receiving this approximately $4,000 donation? No, it did not. It, it, it was formed based on the fact that there was probably going to be a surplus. That changes, that changes the chair's ruling. The chair, the changes the premise. The changes the premise, yeah. The chair's ruling would have been, the chair's ruling would have been, but now, in that case, I have to think I have to rule, you have to go the other way and say, this is an alternative organizational entity. Yes. Okay. So therefore, the, the Seattle 2011 Bid Committee is obliged to report on that remaining bit of surplus and how it's been spent until it's used up. Which is what we're going to do. Okay, thank you, Pat. Is that resolved? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Right. Mr. Clark, first. Before we do that, Wait, just I, a moment. I want to minute this and yeah. then read it out so that would be a thanks to great deliberation. Okay, so members, hang on for a moment because this one, this is actually a, 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 a moderately important precedent in WISPA's financial reporting just was established, and the secretary needs to get it recorded correctly. Thank 
The LA Con 4 financial report, which is on the next to last page, um, there's an item that Mr. Uh, Mr. Glazer, go ahead, you can go ahead and stand up and, and address it if you wish. Uh, I choose not to actually address it, but to, I know that a person who can answer it is not in the room at the moment, but I can uh, ask her and okay. <laughs> read the report back tomorrow. Yeah, please do come back with some sort of report on that. I hadn't noticed it at the time, but there is an issue here. Is it just transferring money out of your own committee into your, into your parent organization doesn't count as getting it off the books for WSPA's purposes, and it shouldn't. If that's really what's going on here, we need to get that. Uh, now, it could be that if Skippy loaned the committee money or did something right, right, like right, that, right, that's, right. but there's not enough information here to, to answer. There is that. a transfer from Skippy under income for building Yeah, down. okay, so please, so please. some of it is I, I mean, passed back. Mr. Glazer, you know the issue. I do, do something about it. <laughs> so, so, so instructed. <laughs> not yet. Did we get a financial report from NIP on 27? I don't want to do the the Who would be the best? Okay. Bit of advice here. Who would be the best person to ask about this and hold them getting a report by tomorrow? Uh, Tamea. 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 <laughs> well, I appreciate it. No, 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 no. I, I need to think of myself. Mr. Glazer, um, can you track her down? Uh, Prudential, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The doesn't have to be up to date. Yeah, it's a month ago. A month ago, two yeah. months ago. It's not current. It's just last year. Last year. Well, yeah. just at some point, okay? Sometimes it's relevant. Uh, I understand the context of the general thing. Okay. So, Ben Glazer was definitely Yes, was asked to uh, <laughs> request a question. Again, you've seen uh, there's a fairly well established precedent that the bloody world can a single page of the latest financials from their spreadsheet will do, which is sure. more yes. than managed in the middle of the world, you know? Right. I don't believe there are any representatives of Archon here, are there? Do you have a question? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm late. Could you, uh, could you please stand to address the chair? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm late. Um, uh, I was asked to answer questions about the Archon financial statement for our None were raised. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> However, since he's here. <laughs> nice. Oh, well, you were late too, John. I know that. I haven't said anything against it. Mr. Mansfield. Yeah, uh, I. Uh, this is the uh, final financial report. I understand that the Vienna General Meeting, July 21st, of the five uh, remaining science major science fiction conventions left in Canada, four of them received money. Is there any particular reason why the fifth did not? Uh, okay, Mr. Fenn, come on, more. stand up to, to answer it. And remember, and members are asked to, to address the room. <coughs> members are re reminded to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Point of order. Yeah. I don't believe that that's within the bounds of WISPIS uh, to ask that question. It's a, it's okay to ask it. They don't actually. My, the chair is not sure they necessarily have to answer it. You think you can okay. it. Um, you can ask any question you like about the financial report. They, they may they may not wish to, they may not wish to answer it. That's the chair's ruling on. Mr. Okay, Montgomery, me, uh, so hang on, wait, the question was, sorry about this. The, the secretary <laughs> wants it, he's going to record it. Okay, can we turn to order? Mr. Gallo raised a point of order regarding the question, and the chair has ruled on it. Most of the uh, board was replaced, 
and the corporation made a decision in 2004 that any uh, grants made by the corporation up, over and above operational expenses, pass along funds, uh, reimbursements had to be approved, approved by the entire membership of the committee. And uh, the committee impaneled a uh, surplus funds committee to receive submissions from uh, conventions uh, and, and other fan organizations. Um, we reviewed uh, proposals from many organizations and uh, I really can't offer a uh, consistent uh, philosophy saying this is why we offered these grants and this is why we didn't because the committee was a political process that had many different opinions. Um, however, uh, I just want to express the opinion that uh, TORCON was a Worldcon. We supported uh, conventions uh, without regard to nationality. So we supported conventions in Michigan and upstate New York. Um, we have supported, we, it happens that many uh, uh, Canadian groups supported our, 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 uh, uh, our TORCON with volunteers and, and other resources and uh, where, you know, where we felt the need was greater than other groups, we offered uh, grants to very, various groups. That's all, that's, that's as deep as I want this meeting to go into the subject. In fact, it's actually about two minutes deeper than I'm going to go <laughs> Um, I don't believe there are any representatives of the NASPIC here, and I do not believe we received a financial report from them. Um, probably due to them just digging out from having held their NASPIC. <laughs> so we do, and you know, it's like a lot of things, we can't compel, we can only ask. But uh, I will try and remember, we're trying to remember to ask them. the nag list. Yeah. <laughs> I will go back through their market section to remember. Yeah. 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 So don't expect to see an aspect report here. We do have a financial report from Dimension 3. There is question time for seated world cons at site selection business meeting. Are there any questions about the financial report only? All right. We'll move on. Okay, yes, that took us about an hour, which is not that unusual in <coughs> routine business. Now we move on to business passed on from LACON 4. We have one uh, pending constitutional amendment that if ratified, this business meeting will become, at, well, when I say this, I mean the one's happening at this world time, will become part of the Constitution and first affect the Hugo Awards next year in this particular case. Uh, we cannot reject this. We could amend it if there was some reason to do so. Uh, the main purpose here is to establish the date times. Uh, on Best Artist Hugo eligibility, the chair suggests 10 minutes. Is there any objection to 10 minutes? I will write never say 10 minutes. I take it there is no business arising out of this that the preliminary meeting would undertake. Good. All right. Now we move to new business. Let's see, some of these we dealt with already, most of these we dealt with already. So 4.1.1 passed, 1.2 passed, 1.3, 1.4, 2.2.1. Right, you're right, I've been correct. Yeah, you can't amend, you can't amend pending ratifications, you can amend new proposals. Okay. And that brings us down to, I believe, the top of page five. Right? Okay, items 4.3. These are new constitutional amendments. Now, this is where we could amend them. Substantive debate on the subject is uh, unwise, although technically legal. Uh, these motions also are subject to a uh, new, new, there are actually three constitutional amendments that have been submitted, one amended, <coughs> Two that are handwritten down at the bottom, items uh, 4.3.2, which are submitted, which is in, uh, submitted separately, and see attached. We'll get to them with each item. This is also the point where the motions are subject to objection to consideration. Is there anybody here unfamiliar with the procedure for objection to consideration? I just one hand, and I'll explain it. Okay, hearing none, I will not explain it. I assume you know. I assume you know what you're, what, what you're doing. That the back. <laughs> 
I'm not Whether you are, is different. No. It is simpler to presumption of innocence in a court of law. Even if you show up covered in blood, you're still. Item four point three point one, gone gone, which would strike out the last sentence of existing three point three point fourteen, best fan artist, and would uh, just uh, make it possible for somebody to be nominated as best professional artist and best fan artist in the same year. Um, is there are, are there any procedural motions at this time regarding this motion for anybody? Okay, in that case, it, go, it will go to the main meeting, and uh, I'll say ten minutes. Although I don't think we, I'm not sure we'll use it all. Now I need to get to the right page in my handout here for four three two. Yeah, Thank you. Sorry. Okay. A separate sheet of paper called Best Website. That is item 4.3.2. This would amend the Constitution, add a new Hugo Award category. Um, it happens to locate it, as I recall, in, it, it actually picks a spot to insert it in the listing, too. It's uh, between semi-prosine and fanzine. Uh, for a new category called Best Website. I'm waiting for somebody to pop up with an objection to consideration here. Do I hear one? Okay, I hear one. Uh, are there any procedural motions or amendments? Mr. Yalla? Uh, move to amend by adding the following wording. Okay, just a moment. For, okay, Slow, slowly for the Secretary's benefit. Any site, as part of its acceptance, must indicate to the administering committee the address where a version of the site that existed during the eligibility year. Slow down. Have you got that written down? Have you got it written? Why don't you bring it up here? <laughs> yeah, go over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can read my hand. I understand that. It's, it's the same problem. Yeah, I have the same problem. Can we hear the reading of it? Yeah. Yeah. Finish reading it, please. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and finish reading it, and then we'll then we'll deal with the writing of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me start from the beginning. Yes. Go ahead. This is to uh, add to add, uh, amend by adding a sentence to to Actually, the end. Actually, it's going to be a couple of sentences. Well, to add to the end of the proposal. Any site as part of its acceptance must indicate to the administering committee the address where a version of the site that existed during the eligibility year exists. The administrative convention shall include this information on the final ballot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now bring it over here and let the secretary write it down. Is there a second to this amendment? May I propose? Second. Okay, it has been seconded. Okay. Uh, May I propose an additional slight amendment to the wording, I believe to refer to an archive of the site as it appeared. The chair does not believe this is uh, that's a substantive mode of change because okay. it isn't effective. Mr. Yallo, are you you want to debate the amendment or are you, are you um, just trying to clarify something? When there's de when debate opens, I you get, you get, get first call on it. I, first well, I promise. Let's wait till the end. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mr. Yallo, I would suggest replacing address with URL. Is there any objection? Yeah. 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 Um, why would you do that? Because God knows what an address is. Maybe it's the address of the safety deposit box where it's put out to the website. Yeah, yeah but an IP address is perfectly acceptable. No, 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 no it's not. It's a URL. You can form resource locator. An IP is also a URL. URL. <laughs> no, it's a URL resource that, locator. This is the only <laughs> reason not to admit. Okay. <laughs> because, because of what the chair observes, that because of you, I now have to put that motion, that amendment to a vote. There's it's been not a, an order, because it's a second order amendment. Uh, no, it's not. Oh, you're right, it is. Sorry. <laughs> I lost track. I lost track. No, I'm serious. I lost track of whatever we were, where we were in the stacks. It is not. We have to resolve the We have to resolve May I suggest that we dissolve into a committee of the whole on drafting so that the technical discussions don't wind up becoming formal orders of amendment? There is a motion to go into committee of the whole for the purpose of discussing this, moment, discussing this amendment and anything rising out of it. Is there a second to that? A second motion. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's a majority required. It's actually debatable. I believe you made the case for that. <laughs> the reason it's debatable is it's a form of the motion to refer to committee, which is a debatable motion. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion to go into committee? 
Uh, show of hands. All those in favor yeah. of going into committee of the whole, raise your hand. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The motion to go into committee of the whole for the discussion of this is adopted. Once the secretary gets it caught up, I will go into committee of the whole and you will preside. Because I'm not allowed to preside in committee of the whole. Uh, you are real committee of the whole. It's what he said. <laughs> It's what I mean. <laughs> 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 Anyone can preside except Kevin. Anybody but yeah. me. We are in committee of the whole at 11 11. Was my motion referred to this committee? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe you shouldn't, huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you got it. It's yours. So, <laughs> we're in committee of the whole. Uh, I'd like to see the microphone's turned off. You don't need it. Ah. Okay. I won't need that. We don't need that. Uh, we're in the committee of the whole. I'd like to suggest a, uh, a procedure, uh, which uh, so there were a couple of suggestions. Uh, the current amendment has the word address in it. Okay. Um, we suggested to replace this with. I'm just getting off the podium entirely. I'm not presiding over this. <laughs> URL, and uh, I also heard a suggestion to replace it with URN. Perhaps we should create a blank. Which has three options: address, URL, and URN, and uh, see if there's any other nominations to fill that blank, and then we can debate between them. Question of privilege. Yes. The secretary of the business meeting. I love it. The secretary of the committee. <laughs> 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 the point of the committee of the whole is it, it doesn't appear in the minutes. Huh? Yes. But the committee of the whole rises in the report. The report of the committee of the whole. You've got to break until the committee of the whole reports any. back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any objection to that procedure? Power. Other than the accepted. Oh, is that what's going on? Can someone, even perhaps, give us an explanation of what the precise difference is? I think I understand, but I'm not sure. Sure, I'm not sure. Is there any objective I find to explain the difference? No. I don't Please do. The URL is a uniform resource locator which is something which, by definition, you can dereference to get to an object. The URN is a uniform resource name, and there is no requirement that it enable you to be a, uh, some, something which will enable you to actually get to any real <coughs> So I think this is supposed to be a website. You want a and locator, not a name. And the address would be the more generic. Address could be anything. Who knows? Well, there was an address. Well, address could be we could IP maybe be specific and ask for an IP address. But no, that does not. No. All the IP addresses are not down the website. Yes. Yeah. The fact is, the IP address <laughs> doesn't take you all the way to the right. data. Right. And besides, the, the site may be a, a subdirectory or page off yes. of some site. As I said, it doesn't take you all the way. And there could be parts of the site that run different IP addresses. So. I didn't understand Ben's amendment. <laughs> okay, so therefore um, I'm not sure what. Well, we're trying to okay, the purpose of this of this committee the whole is to perfect Ben's amendment. Well, so if you, you, you don't which is standard, to make sure like, that you can find it. perfect. Maybe you should listen to Ben. Yes, Ben. Basically, what my amendment says, and I don't know if we should be discussing this now or later. Uh, when we rise out of this committee, which seems to be there for cleaning up the wording. But basically what this says is that if you're going to vote for a site for, say, the best site of 2007 next year, that there has to be some way during the time period when you're actually voting on the best site in 2007 that somebody can see what the site looks like in 2007, and not, not what the site looks like in 2008 when you're actually voting on it. Yes. Yes. Hence my suggestion for the word archive to be inside it. All we require for any other category is that you be able to see an instance. I'm not requiring them to show every possible historical variant to the site, because there may have been millions of them. I just got to see something that existed in the eligible year. Just some place that somebody can find what it had <coughs> looked like during the eligible time period. You wouldn't call that an archive? So. No, because an arch an arch no, because an archive would require that you be able to see Many, uh, if there were multiple versions during that uh, year. Okay, let's, 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 let's adjust it here. I'm not sure that's true, but what do you mean by the word archive? Uh, okay. uh, John, I think he was trying to get it. I, I have, people should stand and be recognized, but they shouldn't stand until the previous speaker is, is seated. 
<laughs> but you, you guys both want to be, so I, I'll go ahead. No, I, I would just, with due respect to my colleague, add that I can be moved because there are a number of places, uh, timemachine.org, I think, or something like that, which does this automatically. So there are places which archive slices of websites automatically. So this may be visible. I, I'm not quite sure this is in order to the business of the whole, the community of the whole to perfect the wording. Of okay. It it's a, it's a, like a debate against the amount okay. of yes. uh, However, uh, Ben does raise a very interesting point which the motion as it is, and as amended, doesn't discuss. One, if we're voting on something, what we're voting on must be frozen in a moment of time. And <coughs> not the amendment actually indicates what it is that you'd be voting on that cannot change during the voting process. The second thing is that there is no... No, I want to think... I, I, don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. We vote on people and they're either not frozen in time. <laughs> The body of work is. <laughs> Does this mean that if the nominated site happens not to have an archive or, or some snapshot from that period, that it becomes ineligible? Yeah, that's yeah. That's yeah. That's yeah. That's yes. Yes. I would like the same question actually applies to the other amendment. It says that the acceptance must be made, but as far as I can tell from the reading, they're not required to accept or deny, and, and it looks like the default, if you don't receive either one, is to put it on the ballot. But I, I was going to ask about that in, in tomorrow. I'm not sure about that, actually. Don't, no. Yes. Um, actually, standing. Oh, he's the standing. He's the maker of the oh, motion. Uh, two things. Uh, first off, he's been paid to know the URL. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, just, to, just to make that clear. And second, I would suggest that the administrators <coughs> of the Hugo Awards would find a way to find a site of some URL that you could look at that would be the same for everybody during the voting period. The section 3.9 says if they decline nomination, they shall not appear on the final ballot. It does not say anything about if they don't accept. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm Mike McMillan at the uh, Nippon 2007. Uh, anything on the website, you can put <coughs> blame on me. Um, I proposed this amendment after receiving the, uh, the Hugo site uh, come up and explain the rules for doing this. Uh, the text uh, of the uh, amendment is taken from the uh, from Con Jose, who presented the uh, best Hugo Award. And it's fairly simple. Uh, we stripped out the your specific stuff. Uh, Ben's amendment would, uh, I mean, it's you know, very long, very complicated. And websites are not like novels. Uh, they're, by their nature, very dynamic. And just thinking of the uh, our website, I mean, it's week to week it has changed. And you would present quite a quite an obligation on a website to you know freeze it sometimes so everybody can see it. Um, okay, so we're trying to figure out what this is one change in one word in, in Ben's amendment right now. Then oh we're yeah. 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 yeah pretty no, okay. So if I mean, there are other words that need to change we should discuss Yes that's true. Right. Uh, but okay. I think simpler is better. Uh, yeah, Don, okay, I think yeah. you I think that we're we pretty much reached consensus. We have. I, I, I think URL <laughs> is probably fine with everybody. Anybody object to URL? <laughs> Just to get into it. Seeing no objection, anybody object to the we the whole rising reporting uh, that uh, the, the amendment with the address replaced by URL? Do you want to deal with any other wording issues? Right. I just want to get is there another wording issue? Wording. Seeing none, does anybody object to the, can, the whole rising and reporting? Can you yeah. just read what we're going to report? Sure. So that we know. <laughs> well, I'll read. I'll read. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not part of this committee, but I will be reading the paragraph. You were a part of the committee, you're just not the secretary. Any site as part of its acceptance must indicate to the administrating committee the URL for a version of the site that exists during the eligibility year exists. Yes. <coughs> I would like to propose a change to that to insert the word frozen <coughs> for URL. 
You are also free. Is there, there, there are Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just read it again. I'm frozen somewhere else. <coughs> um, frozen version. Yeah. Okay. URL for a frozen version. That's, that's what we're 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 frozen That's why we're opposed to it. You're frozen before the word version. Uh, is there a second? <coughs> I propose the word know. archive. Is there a second? Okay. Well, An archive frozen second. before version. Okay. I second. Okay. Uh, is there a discussion on inserting frozen before version? Particularly we speak against. I really think that, 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 that if we try to qualify it too precisely, we're just going to get ourselves in, in a lot of trouble. Uh, and the Hugo administrator isn't going to know the difference between a frozen version and a version that can be modified, since even frozen archival versions can be modified if it's digital tech, if it's digital. Um, you can't freeze it. I, I'm inclined to agree. Uh, the example that occurs to me is something like, say, the Ansible website, which has changed on a monthly basis, and they might want to put up half a dozen different months as an example, rather than just a frozen version. So we sure. need to have a fairly wide range. Yeah, of I agree. <coughs> Question. Yes. If, how do they know to freeze a version? For instance, say I've got a website this year. And how do I know to freeze a version for Hugo right. purposes if I don't know I've been nominated for a Hugo yet? Right. That's a speech against uh, inserting frozen. That speech in favor of inserting frozen? Okay. Sorry, I like it. It's exactly the same as a dramatic presentation where you are voting on a known version. You are not voting on something and the director's cut and somebody else's cut and something else. You're voting on something that is an entity. If since a website could be changed in its entirety between being nominated and close of voting, you could, in fact, be voting on two completely different entities with no consistency. Speech against frozen? Uh, websites, by their nature, change over the course of time. Sure. It's, it's not logical to vote only on a frozen version of a website. You're looking at their work over the year, and they're just submitting representation works for us to use in consideration for voting. Mm -hmm. I don't find the analogy. Is there a speech in favor of frozen? Oh. Or any yeah. further speeches against? In favor. Uh, um, one of the things that's eligible for best dramatic presentation is a play. And a play might have a number of performances. And in best dramatic presentation, you don't vote on which nights you saw the play. You just vote <laughs> on the play. Uh, and I think there's a good analogy to the website yeah, from dramatic great. presentation and the live play. Well, well, which can yeah. It's not a completely do we different company. Do we need more debate? Yeah. Uh, yeah. On this? Do we need more debate on this? Uh, should uh, we? Yes? Just that, uh, from, a, from a technical perspective, um, if you really wanted to try and freeze this and enforce it, you'd have to wind up using cryptographic measures, which I think are extreme to place on, on, on websites. Because you'd have to ensure that what was there was then, you know, hashed and signed to make sure that it's not changed, right? And that's, that's, that's extreme. To get to that point, in order to absolutely ensure it, it's, it's not reasonable. It's, a, it's an unreasonable burden. This was really key. Yeah. <laughs> Um, an argument in favor of having a frozen version of the site is the, what if the scenario of a site gets nominated for best, then it goes, then the author modifies it before the voters have a chance to see it, and they see a different site. It's not necessarily the same site that was nominated. Um, I would submit that the word frozen can't be semantically defined in a clear way in terms of websites, because uh, a, a single page uh, may have like um, and have content. content and then um, three or four files that organize and format the page. Um, it would pose an impossible burden on webmasters to not change any of the back files that they need to manage the entire site. Um, I think voters under will basically understand a reasonably static version and trying to define this in a way, up to try to, try to define it frozen uh, the word frozen by itself is not sufficiently clear, and trying to define it uh, in, a, in a perfect way will not find consensus and will not always solve a problem. Okay. Parliamentary inquiry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's more, I forgot because I looked it up because it's been so long since we did one. Uh, is the question of the previous question in order in committee as a whole? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, in my original motion, which does not contain the word frozen, I simply say 
a version of the website that existed during that year, and I leave it up to the technical capabilities of whoever is running the website that he wants that is nominated to figure out how to implement it. I'm not going to try and tell techies, sorry, when I am not wearing my techie hat, <laughs> I am not going to try and tell techies how to run their websites. If, on the other hand, you want to pay me large sums of money, I will be glad to. <laughs> uh, um, if we are going to deal with questions of facts, such as whether something is frozen, we typically leave those to the voters. There are plenty of technical people who are going to be looking at the websites and will say, that is not a representative version of the one that appeared last year. And the voters will know that because it will get all over the web very quickly. So I think we should, we, we, we should leave out Frozen and let people put up what they think is their representative website and let other people argue about it because that's what the UGOs is about. Chairman, <laughs> <laughs> I moved the previous question on the, most pending, on the current pending amendment. Okay, is there any objection to voting now? We're about to vote on inserting the word Frozen before version. All those uh, in favor of inserting the word Frozen, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The <laughs> motion fails. Are there any further changes to the amendment? Yeah. Is, does the term archival uh, sufficiently have a reference that Frozen doesn't? No. No. There any other changes? Anybody, how, do people, how do people feel about making it where, like, where a representative version of the website? That's exactly that's a term. It still uh, seems synonymous. Okay. Uh, I don't think we're adding any of the other changes. Uh, well, I, I, I would disagree that it's uh, synonymous. A version. Well, there's no motion on the floor. I, I was motion? about to move that the, 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 the a representative sample of the of material from the year in question, since we've already established that it's not possible to ensure there's a precise exact version of the snapshot from the prior year. Is there Let's a second see. for that change? Carry on. Motion fails for lack of a second. Are there any other changes proposed? You want to read it back? Yeah, uh, sure. Let's read it back. Okay. What I'm, what I'm going to work out now is any website, as part of its acceptance, must, it must administer, must, excuse me, must indicate to the administering committee the URL where a version of the website that existed during the legibility year exists. The administering committee should include this information in the final ballot. Anybody object to writing and reporting that version to the business meeting? Seeing um, none. One, one question, can a website accept, or does it have to be a person who accepts? <laughs> <laughs> Magazines accept. Yeah. Yeah. Magazines accept. Website is a company, a company can accept. A website is a company, a company can accept. A company is a company, a company can accept. A company is a person. But that means a website is a person. <laughs> We're getting my hats I don't think that's a problem. <laughs> Anything else? Before, any objection to rising reporting? Hearing none, I declare the committee of the whole adjourned. And uh, chair, what committee rises and reports as reported by the, the secretary who is not a secretary? Is, uh, <laughs> 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 the secretary of the committee, the whole committee, the secretary of the meeting. Yes. That's only the chair who is affected by the meeting. Well, that's a good point there. Um, <laughs> The chair understands the committee of the whole has a report. <laughs> yeah, as chair of the committee of the whole, uh, committee of the whole rises and reports the, the, the amendment with the word address replaced by URL. And other changes. Is there any wish, one who wishes the amendment read again? Okay, <laughs> no. I need yeses, not noes. If you don't want it to say, be quiet. All right, the question is on the amendment, which I believe debate on the amendment would be in order at the preliminary meeting. Yeah. Um, we haven't established a time limit, and we should. Um, let me see. As an amendment, it defaults to five minutes debate time. Which we've already used up. Well, yeah, we know. We've made the poll. Oh, oh, well, we used it before. I, the, the chair says five minutes debate time at this point on the amendment to the constitutional amendment. Mr. Yallo, as the maker of the original motion, has preference in speaking. Mr. Yallo. Um, as I indicated before, I want the voters to be able to see what it is that they are voting on. With a novel 
the version of the novel that appears in front of the voters after January or after March when the final ballot comes out is the version of the novel that existed that they were voting on. Uh, with a website that isn't true, that I thought was a defect in what we've done before. Yes, I agree we've done it before. It was broken because people were voting on what they saw then, not what they saw during the eligibility year. Reputation Hugos are a bad thing. And if you're voting on not the work that existed then, but the work that you see in front of you, or that's been a great website for years, or whatever, and you can't see what it is you're voting on, then all you're voting on is reputation. There's got to be a way for the voters to see what it is that they're actually nominating and voting on. And all this does is it requires that to exist somehow. Now, they may be able to implement that by going to time machines and saying, give me a snapshot. But if there's sufficient dynamic content, or they're marking it technically, which they can do, saying, please do not archive me, there might not be another archive that you can go to. Again, I leave all of those to the site administrator. They figure out how to make the version that existed during the eligibility year available. I'm not going to tell them how. I'm simply going to say, let me see what it is that I'm voting on that appeared during the year that it's eligible. Speech again. Uh, yes. Margie. Uh, uh, I, it's, it's an illogical thing to me because you cannot get on the ballot unless enough people nominate you. And all of those people have already seen that, say, 2007 version. And they have encouraged their friends to, at least the way, that's the way my people were. You just pass stuff on. This is a really cool site. Go look at it. So most of the voters may have already seen this site. And if they start looking as soon as the nominations come out, they're going to be able to tell, because that's mostly in January or February. They're going to be able to tell if there are major changes. <coughs> I see no reason to put this onus on the website person. For one thing, you're putting it on everybody, because nobody knows who's going to get nominated for the Hugo. So every single SF website out there who thinks they might get nominated is going to have to find a way to archive something people can see. Yeah. And, and I, to me, that's <coughs> illogical. I am of the keep it simple school. Thank you. Speech in favor of the amendment. Um, in favor of the amendment. OK. Um, I'm going to pose a simple analogy of if somebody had a black and white drawing and it became nominated, they found out, so they immediately colored it before the rest of the voters saw it. That would unduly favor that piece of work, and they wouldn't be voting on a piece of work that was nominated. The same is true with a website, even if, if whether it's a, a normally dynamic website or a website that can be altered after the fact because they've been nominated, the wording that is being proposed by Mr. Yallo, the amendment, uh, would at least level the playing field. Uh, the, amend, the speech time in favor or speeches in favor have expired. I was trying to let you get to the end of a sentence. Or Sorry. <laughs> uh, speech against, how much time is remaining again? Six, six seconds. Okay. Mr. McMillan, against the amendment. Um, this speaking from the Nippon 2007 website, which would be affected by this amendment. Uh, archiving would be just about impossible. And if any of you were kind enough to nominate our website for a Hugo, I sure wouldn't change it. I mean, if it's good enough to get nominated, you know, I'm not going to mess with it. But it, 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 provide, it imposes quite a burden on that. I mean, HIPAA 2007 is vast if you ever dug into it. We've got tons of stuff, and there's no way to freeze it at, at any point. And it changes all the time, too. Uh, about 
20 seconds left for speeches against the amendment. Okay, and that no one else wishing to speak toward it. On the amendment to add the phrase, uh, any website as part of its acceptance must indicate to the administering committee the URL or version of the website that existed during the legislative year exists. The administering committee can include this information in the final file. All those in favor of that amendment, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, uh, the affirmative has it, and the amendment is uh, carried. The proposed amendment to the Constitution is amended accordingly. This, uh, are there any other changes to propose to this propose to this before we send it forward for consideration tomorrow? <sighs> Time limit for debate. Ew. Ten minutes. Well, yeah, all right. I'll say ten minutes. The members are reminded that uh, you can extend the limits of the debate uh, oh. later if you need to. Uh, Mr. Yellow? I propose 20 minutes. It takes the two-thirds place to extend the debate. Whereas, uh, a good point. Whereas right. we can uh, always we short. I understand. Mr. Yellow is correct. Well, now that gives us two choices. So, is there anyone who objects to 20 minutes? Uh, let's just set it at 20 minutes. Then. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. That <coughs> that one is 4.3.2. Okay, you get to the right page in my document here for 4.3.3. A quick question before we move on. Yes. Uh, Will, and I know you didn't want to generate more paper, but we want an updated version of this um, item to be available tomorrow. No, no. no. Mm -hmm. It will have to be dealt with uh, at by hand at that point. Okay. Okay. Which does mean we'll have to read the motion back to people, I'm afraid, a few times. There are extremely good technical reasons, starting off the fact that the copies that this convention are using are Slow. single sheet yeah. without a document to be Oh, good. Which is wonderful for a newsletter and not much good for an agenda. The secretary says no. I'll let him have his way about these things. So. The uh, last. Yeah. Are you people who the secretary? No. Not unless you want to be the secretary. Right. It's 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 no, not unless you want the job yourself. Because, <laughs> frank, frankly, somebody has to actually go and do the work. Anyway. If the chair is for me to do so, I would have posted it. <laughs> the chair is a friend who knows I'm on honey. And even besides that, the chair is a former Worldcon business meeting secretary himself. <laughs> Item 4.3.3 is an amendment uh, labeled One Vote Wonders, which would uh, has been corrected and grammatical corrections given to us. If this, uh, if the amendment would add a phrase to the end of section 3.11.4. This is regarding the listing of uh, they also what, what I usually call the they also ran list, but the list of nominees for the top 15 and how many votes they got. Um, the word in the last sentence, the underlying phrase, the word less actually ought to be fewer. And therefore, the amendment, as modified by the maker, um, reads to add the words, but not including any candidate receiving fewer than five votes. And uh, is there anyone who wishes to object to consideration of this? Okay. Uh, then it will go forward. Are there any issues that would be raised technically on this? It, okay, do you know where page, have you found page five of your agenda? Yeah. Turn the page and look on the right hand side. Okay. It says 4.3.3 at the top of it. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this motion has been submitted by Joyce Hooper, who is the this year's Hugo Award Administrator, and due to the timing of the Hugo Awards in our business meeting, um, she has asked that this be postponed and made a general order, which is to say we not consider it until the Sunday business meeting on account of there's this information that she can't talk about just yet that's involved <laughs> with this motion. Um, is there any objection to postponing consideration of this motion until the uh, uh, Sunday business meeting? Okay, so that will get that is Oh, well, as a general order, so it will come to the agenda of this time, not, not a specific time. Of it. Oh, a time limit, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, the chair suggests 10 minutes. 10 minutes, then. All of the remaining business on the agenda is for material coming up in site selection business on Sunday. That means tomorrow, when we come back uh, to this same room, uh, we will pick up 
We'll start at the top, but many of these things have been checked off. We will have the market protection committee election, um, and then we will work, skip down into uh, constitutional amendments. Are there any other issues to bring up before the meeting at this time? Uh, you're not trying to get my attention, are you? Are you? I was going to move for adjourn. No, I, 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 the chair will deal with that. Without, object, uh, without objection, we are adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.